Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will study the symmetries of uh, given n gon. Okay, so that will be actually called the dihedral groups. Okay, let us uh, uh, fix an n gon. Okay, so one way to think about this n gon. So you can take this roots of unity. So you fix first of all uh, some n in n. So fix n in n and then consider the roots of unity of n. So consider this u n, this is those e z in C such that e z power n is 1. Okay. So then we know that there are n distinct roots for this equation x power n equal to 1. So let us label them. So you label them as 1 omega, omega square and so on omega power n minus 1. Note that omega power n will be 1. Okay. So, if you plot them in the unit circle, then, then you just connect them with an edge, then what you get is n gone. So, you draw this unit circle. Okay. So, then let us say this 1 is here and then so if you actually write it using this uh, uh, cos theta of sin theta. So, then this omega is going to be e power 2 pi i divided by n. Okay. So, then this omega is going to be cos 2 pi by cos 2 pi by n plus i sin 2 pi by n. Okay. So, if you use this x y coordinates then this omega is nothing but cos 2 pi by n comma sin 2 pi by n. So, this is your omega. So, then omega square and so on you can easily calculate what it is. So, basically omega power i sorry omega power some r is going to be equal to e power 2 pi i r divided by n for all 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to n minus 1. Okay. So, these points that you can plot it in circle S1. So, then you can see that. So, this is going to be your omega. So, that max angle 2 pi by n. Okay. You take this 1 and rotate this 1 in a counterclockwise direction and then by the ang by by the angle 2 pi by n then you get this omega so this is this is how you get so you rotate r so 2 pi by n so this is the angle okay rotation about the origin in the counter clockwise direction okay so then you get uh, from 1 to omega you get so then again you do the same uh, rotation and then if you apply again so then what you get is omega square so that is going to be again angle between omega and omega square will be again 2 pi by n and the angle between 1 and omega square that will be 4 pi by n so then you plot it this way and so on then you will be having this omega power n minus 1 here Okay, so this is how you plot all this uh, omega, omega square and so on on this uh, unit circle S1. So then what you do to, to get this n gone, so we are talking about this uh, regular n gone. So in particular the distance between successive vertices that should be same. So that means, so the distance between 1 and omega and the distance between omega and omega square, omega square, omega cube and so on. So, they all must be same. Okay. And again the distance between 1 and omega power n minus 1, they all must be same. If you connect them by edges, okay, then you can see that what you get is this n con. So, the distance between omega i, sorry, omega r and omega r plus 1 should be same as the distribution between 1 and omega. Okay, so, now you got this n gone. 
So, what we want to understand? We want to understand the symmetries of this n guard. So, what is the meaning of that? You collect all the symmetries of this R2 that leaves this n guard invariant. So, that is the group that we are interested in understanding. So, let us define this group G. Okay. So, traditionally it is actually denoted by D2n or Dn. Okay. So, most of the books actually uses uh, both the notation. Uh, so, let us actually stick with one of the notation. So, let us let us say that uh, our group is D2n. So, what is this? This is those sigma from this isometries of R2 such that this sigma of this n gon is invariant. Okay. So, now note that uh, because it is actually uh, fixes, okay. so it has to actually just maps this n gon to n gon. Okay. So, then the vertices of this n gon must be mapped to the vertices of n gon. So, we call this 1 omega omega square etcetera omega power n minus 1 as this vertices of n gon. Okay, so, let us actually relabel just for uh, our uh, own purpose. Okay. So, what we are going to do? So, so we just rotate this n gon and then we just write it as follows so that our uh, understanding of this n gon becomes clear. Okay. So, draw this circle and then the plot these vertices. Now, instead of labeling them 1 omega omega square, what we are going to label? We label them as 1, 2, 3 and we label them in the clockwise. Okay. So, 1 and then you have 2 and then you have 3 and then you have 4 and similarly by symmetry you have here this side n and then n minus 1 and then n minus 2. So, now you connect them using the edges then you get your n gone. So, this is your n gone. So, now we are interested in understanding all possible symmetries of this. Okay. So, maybe uh, so let us uh, let us try to understand one thing, okay. maybe I will leave it as exercise to verify. So, this is something very easy exercise. So, if you have a sigma coming from this isometries of R2 and then it fixes let us say this n gone. So, then this sigma must map origin to origin. Okay. So, that is very important because this n con is a symmetrical object around this origin. Okay. So, this by, by uh, isometry we know that it is distance preserving map from R2 to R2 and we are demanding that that leaves this n gon to n gon. Okay. So, that means uh, you can see that okay. for example, if you take this uh, number 1 in this circle S1. Okay. So, that the distance between 0, 1 and the distance between 0, the opposite of that minus 1 they must be same. Okay. If that is the case then you can see that there are already very few possibilities. So, what is the distance between 0, 1 that is 1. So, you can draw a circle around this 1 okay. and then you can draw a circle around this minus 1 circle of radius 1 around this minus 1. So, then you can see that. So, wherever they are intersecting, so that will be the only point that will be left invariant. So, that should be left invariant okay. and you can see that that is exactly the origin. Okay. So, this is something very easy to verify. If you have a isometry that leaves n gone to n gone, then that should map origin to origin. So, now once you know that it is it is actually mapping origin to an origin. 
So, then we have more information about uh, that isometry in particularly that isometry comes from actually this uh, orthogonal maps of this R2 that is O of R2. So, this is coming from O of R2 such that it leaves n gone to n gone. So, now if you think about it we already seen that what are all the possible orthogonal maps for given sigma in O of R2. So, we know that this sigma is associated with some theta. So, there exists theta of sigma. So, that theta is in between 0 and 2 pi strictly 2 pi such that either this sigma is a rotation which is cos theta of sigma sin theta of sigma minus sin theta of sigma and then cos theta of sigma or it is actually a reflection. So, that is again cos theta of sigma sin theta of sigma and then here sin theta of sigma and then minus cos theta of sigma. Okay. So, it has to be either rotation again rotation means rotation about origin or a reflection again reflection about the line passing through origin. So, both are linear maps. So, they actually uh, leaves this uh, n gone invariant. So, such maps only we are interested in studying. So, now if you think about it. So, for example, if you take this rotation about this angle 2 pi by n okay, rotation by 2 pi by n uh, with respect to this uh, origin. So, that is going to leave this uh, n gone invariant. So, that is for sure. Okay. So, so if you just uh, rotate with respect to origin. So, this rotation r again by 2 pi by n. So, that is going to leave this n gone invariant. Now, there is another important uh, uh, important uh, element from from this d d 2 n what it is. So, you can draw this line that passes through this vertex 1 and origin. Okay. So, draw this line. So, then you can reflect with respect to this line. Then again this n gone will be actually invariant. Let us call that is rho. Okay. So, what this rho does? So, let let us try to explain. So, here your 1 is there, here 2, here 3, here 4 and then here you have n, here n minus 1 and n minus 2. Now, you draw this line which passes through 1 and then 1 means the first vertex and the origin 0. So, by rotating the plane you can assume this 1 is your actual 1 on the x axis not a problem. But anyway you take this line that passes through 0 and 1 you reflect with respect to this line you call that is operator rho then you can see that that actually leaves this uh, n gone invariant. Okay. So, if you think about it what it does this row. So, this row takes this uh, picture and then you can see that it maps to again another picture similar to that. So, you draw this circle. So, you have this one. So, that one is actually mapped to itself. So, because it is a fixed uh, point for that row. So, then you can see that these other points are actually map to other points. So, this 2 is map to n. So, this 2 goes here, this n goes to here and then this 3 comes here, then n minus 1 comes here and 4 comes here and n minus 2 goes here and so on. So, this is what this row does. Okay. And what the rotation does? Rotation again it is easy to write down. So, maybe I, you can think about it what it is. But it is very clear that because sigma is an isometry and uh, it maps n gone to n gone. So, that simply tells. So, these are all the observation immediate observations. 
sigma must map the vertices of this n gone to the same vertices itself. Okay, so it must map the vertices of n gone to itself, and it must be a bijective map because it is a bijective map from R two to R two. So now uh, it means the action of the sigma is indeed uniquely determined by its action on the vertices. So this is the thing. So if you think about it, sigma is uniquely determined by its action on the vertices. So, this is also true. So, it is uniquely determined its action on the vertices. So, for example, this r rotation 2 pi by n is given by, so you can identify this with. So, it is just a permutation on the vertices 1 to n because it is bijectively maps 1 to n to 1 to n. Then if you think about it, what it does this rotation on this vertices 1 to n, you can explicitly write down and then see. So, this 1 should be mapped to 2, 2 should be mapped to 3 and so on. This n minus 1 map should be mapped to n and 1 should be mapped to 1, n should be mapped to 1. And similarly, this row, this row is given as follows. It is exactly 1, 2, 3, etc. n minus 1, n and then 1 should be fixed and 2 should be mapped to n, 3 should be mapped to n minus 1 and so on and this n is mapped to 2, n minus 1 mapped to 3. So, this is the effect, Okay, this is what we have written here, n is mapped to sorry, yeah, n is mapped to 2, 2 is mapped to n and so on. So, now if you think about it because sigma is a is an isometry that leaves this n gone invariant. So, it is uniquely determined by its action on the vertices, but if you think about it because what you have is cycle that is this n gone is nothing but a cycle. So, the vertices are mapped to vertices. So, the adjacent edges also should be mapped to adjacent edges. Okay? So, that is how it should map there is no other option. So, that means if you take this image of 1, so this sigma of 1, okay, then it is mapped to let us say some i. So, then the sigma of 2 either it can be i plus 1 or i minus 1. So, only those are all the two options. So, it can be either i plus 1 or i minus 1 because sigma of 1 is i. So, the only vertices that are adjacent to i is i minus 1 or i plus 1. So, read this modulo n. Okay. So, because when it is i is n then i minus 1 will be just 1. Okay. n minus 1 you are getting identify with 1 sorry n plus 1 you identify with 1 i minus 1 will be n minus 1. For example, when i is n, then i minus 1 is n minus 1, but n plus 1 is 1. So, this is what this is how we are reading. Okay. So, what is the important point? If i and j are adjacent in this n gone, so then sigma of i and sigma of j they must be okay they must be adjacent in again the end okay you are now thinking it as a graph and then you are saying that this graph has these vertices 1 2 3 etc n minus 1 n and then these edges are there one is adjacent to 2 and 1 is adjacent to n and so on. So, this is basically a cycle C n and you are saying that whenever two vertices i and j are adjacent in this graph, then the sigma of i and sigma of j must be adjacent in the same graph. Okay? So, that puts lots of restriction. So, if sigma of n is sigma of 1 is i, 
then the sigma of 2 either it can be i minus 1 i plus 1 that is all. But if you think about it sigma is again uniquely determined by its action on the determined by its action on the vertices 1 and 2. Okay. So, this is something very easy to see from the geometry, okay, geometric interpretation. I will leave it to you to actually think about it. So, this sigma, now we know that it is determined uniquely by its action on the vertices, but we do not need to know all possible action. It is enough to know only the, how it acts on 1 and 2, that is enough. The remaining things are fine. So, now you can already see that okay, the possibilities are, so sigma of 1 has n choices because it can be any vertex from 1 to n okay. and then if you take sigma of 2, so given sigma of 1, let us say it is i, then sigma of 2 has only 2 choices, either it is i minus 1 or i plus 1. So, it has only 2 choices. So, this thing implies that the total number of choices for sigma is at most 2n. So, the number of choices for sigma is at most 2n because sigma of 1 has n choice, sigma 2 has 2 choice. So, the total number of sigma must be 2n because sigma is uniquely determined by its action on sigma of 1 and sigma of 2. So, this proves that the cardinality of this D2n that the group can be at most to 2n. So, this is what very important. Okay. But note that we already established this R and rho, they are two elements of this D2n. Okay. So, one is a rotation, this is a rotation about the origin by this 2 pi by an angle, and this is a reflection, reflection with respect to a line. So, reflection again with respect to the line L. So, that L is drawn in this. Okay. So, this is this is our L. So, now using this observation you can see that this D2n is having at most 2n elements and R rho both are elements of D2n. So, now using this R and rho we are going to actually produce more and more elements. Okay. So, before that uh, let us see there is this one very important uh, relation between R and rho. So, we claim that if you compose okay, R with rho, okay, R rho that should be same as rho R inverse. So, what does it mean? If you take the conjugate of R by rho then that must be R inverse. So, there are many ways to ch check this. Okay, One can simply draw the diagram and then see what happens and then one can also use this uh, uh, interpretation of this R and rho in terms of this permutation. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check. Okay, Here is the exercise. So, using this interpretation check directly that R rho is same as rho R inverse. Okay. So, this is something you can directly check. So, now I will just uh, demonstrate this relation using the diagrams. So, now you can see that if you take this diagram 1, 2, 3, etcetera, n minus 1, n. So, then if you apply rho, then what do you get? You get the similar thing. So, rho is a reflection. So, 1 is fixed, then n is mapped to 2. Okay. So, this is n, this is 2, this is n minus 1, this is sorry, this is 3 and this is n minus 1. So, this is what you get. So, this is by applying rho. Now, apply r, then what you get? You get, so you are rotating counterclockwise. So, counterclockwise by 2 pi by n. So, then this n will go here and then 2 will go here, 1 will go here and this will be n minus 1, this will be n minus 2. So, this is going to be 
you are your rotation yeah okay so now okay so let me but i wrote this rotation in the clockwise yeah okay maybe we will take the rotation to be the clockwise rotation when we reinterpret so there is no big difference because the clockwise rotation and the counter clockwise rotation they will be inverse to each other okay so here even though i have told you that uh, this is uh, rotation in the counter clockwise maybe i will take it to be just uh, let's rewrite this this is the clockwise rotation because that is what i have written here in this so if you take this this is actually the clockwise rotation because one goes to 2 two goes to 3 and so on okay because that is what so one goes to 2 2 goes to 3 3 goes to 4 so that is a clockwise rotation okay so my r is just uh, this let's say this clockwise rotation so that is fine so that is again inverse of the counter clockwise notation so now you can see that so then then, then this is something i have to rearrange so because this r is going to do this clockwise rotation so this one will go here two will come here and three will come here four will come here and this will be here okay so this is what you are getting it after applying rho and r so now let us see what will happen if you apply rho r inverse okay so let's start with this 1 2 3 etc n minus 1 n so now you apply first r inverse so r inverse is the counter clockwise rotation so that means this 2 goes to 1 so 2 3 4 1 yeah this is what you get so now you just apply rho on this so then you can see that this 2 goes to this 2 is fixed and 1 goes to one goes here one goes to 3 3 goes to 1 so you can see that so this is 1 this is 3 and this is 4 this is here so now let's try to match this these two diagram so here it is 2 here it is 2 and then here it is 1 here it is 1 here it is 3 and here it is 3 so rest of the things will be same okay so once One and two, where it is mapped is fixed. Then it is clear that rest of the things are also fixed. So that is why. So this is going to give you the same isometries of n gamma. So that proves that R rho is same as rho R inverse. So like I said, this you can verify using this uh, permutation. Uh, permutation uh, representation okay there is no issue okay so now we have this uh, rho r rho so this is same as rho r rho is r inverse so now using this you can immediately check that if you take r power some l and then rho then that is going to be exactly equal to rho r power minus l so this is just by induction okay so this is true for any l so now let us check this so by induction so l equal to 1 we verified let us say for l equal to l plus 1 we want to do so this is going to be r times r power l rho but r power l rho will be r times rho r power minus l so which is going to be rho r power minus 
L plus 1. Okay. So, this is going to be plus 1 and then you will get this minus 1. So, this is r times rho r power minus l, then this r rho is rho r power minus 1 r power minus l which is rho r power minus l plus 1. So, this is what we wanted to prove. So, now this says that d 2 n contains this r power let us say k rho power l where 0 less than or equal to k less than n and then L is 0 comma 1. So, all these elements are there for sure. Okay. So, now if you think about it this r power k rho power L cannot be r power k dash rho power L dash. If this is equal then if and only if we can prove that the tuple k L must be same as k dash L dash. So, why this is the case? So, one way is obvious let us prove the other way. If r power k is r power k rho power l is same as r power k dash rho power l dash, let us assume k is greater than or equal to k dash, then that would imply that r power k minus k dash is same as rho power l dash minus l. But if you think about it, one side is rotation, again these are all rotation about origin and the other side is a reflection it is either reflection or identity. Okay, This is either identity or a reflection and here also this is either identity or a reflection, but rotation cannot be equal to reflection because the determinant of the reflection is 1 and the determinant of the reflection is minus 1. So, that means this forces that both of them must be identity, there is no other option. Okay. So, because rotation has determinant 1, the reflection has determinant minus 1. So, that means both of them cannot be non-trivial. So, that means, so this has to be equal to identity. Okay. So, that would prove that k equal to k dash. So, once you know k equal to k dash, then rho L dash minus L is identity that would say that L dash equal to L. Okay, because both L and L dash they are coming from 0 comma 1 that is why they are same. So, now uh, this says that all these tuples they are all okay, giving you distinct elements here in the right hand side, but we already know that the cardinality of D 2 n is at most to 2 n. So, that forces that D 2 n must be same as this r power k rho power l where 0 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n minus 1 and l is 0 or 1. Okay. So, these are all, all possible symmetries of this d 2 n and it is easy to write down what are they. For example, if l equal to 0 then r power k is a rotation again clockwise rotation about the angle 2 pi k by n. Okay. This is a rotation in clockwise not the anti clockwise by the angle 2 pi k by n and then if you take r power k rho. So, this is going to be reflection okay. again reflection about some line that passes through origin okay. because the determinant of this the determinant of r power k rho is going to be determinant of r power k which is 1 times determinant of rho which is minus 1. Okay. So, we I will leave it you to actually check what will be the physical interpretation of all of them. So, rotation is very easy to understand because this is just clockwise rotation by 2 pi pi k n. So, now you need to understand what happens if you apply r power k rho. It is a reflection. So, you can see that it has to be a reflection about a line that passes through origin and some vertex. Okay. So, like we did we took a line that passes through vertex 1 and origin. Similarly, you can take a any line that passes through origin and some vertex 
okay, and then you can reflect with respect to that. So, that is going to be again your is isometry of this n ga. Okay. So, this is something you can directly check, I will leave it to you to check. So, this, this says that our dihedral group it has exactly these 2 n points, okay, uh, 2 n elements and it is very explicitly given with this. Now, it is not hard to write down uh, the product table. So, r power k rho power l times r power k dash rho power l dash. So, that will be exactly r power k plus k dash rho power l dash if l equal to 0 or otherwise it is going to be r power k minus k dash rho power l plus l dash if l equal to 1. So, this is just follows from the fact that r power k rho equal to rho r power minus k. Okay. So, use this to get that uh, you have this very explicit uh, product table. Okay. So, now this way actually we get all information about the dihedral group. So, I will actually end with one exercise. Okay. Here is uh, another matrix interpretation of these uh, dihedral groups. Okay. If you take this uh, GL2C, so then one can naturally embed this uh, D2N inside this uh, GL2C. How one can embed? You can prove that this D2N is nothing but the subgroup generated by these matrices. 0 1 1 comma 0 and then this uh, e power 2 pi pi i n 0 0 e power minus 2 pi pi i n. So, if you think about it what this matrices corresponds to. So, this corresponds to your reflection okay, and uh, reflection about this line x axis. So, this is a reflection about the line x axis and this is a counter clockwise notation a rotation. So, this is actually the rotation about 2 pi pi n. So, this is counter clockwise rotation and note that both of them are actually linear operators so that fixes origin and they are isometries of R 2 that, that uh, leaves this uh, n gone which is obtained from this uh, roots of unity 1 omega omega square etcetera. Okay. Basically, we have rewritten the elements of this D 2 n in the matrix form okay. and then we are simply saying that D 2 n is just generated by these two matrices. So, because we just saw that in other notation. So, that has exactly 2 n number of elements in this subgroup. Okay. So, it is basically what we proved earlier is what written in this exercise. Okay, in terms of the matrix representation. So, you can directly prove that uh, the D 2 n is naturally isomorphic to subgroup generated by these two. So, similar to this you can also check D 2 n is subgroup isomorphic to these uh, two uh, yeah, generated by these two uh, permutations 1 to n where 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3 etcetera n goes to 1. So, this is the rotation r and then you have this reflection. So, where 1 is fixed 2 goes to n, 3 goes to n minus 1 and then n goes to 2. Okay. So, this is the matrix sorry permutation representation of D 2 n. So, this is a subgroup of S n. Okay. So, there are two different way of uh, identifying D 2 n. So, we can embed D 2 n inside GL 2 of C by looking at uh, the subgroup generated by these two matrices or you can embed D 2 n inside S n by looking at uh, this permutation representation. Okay. So, with this I will I will stop now uh, and then we will continue to actually understand uh, uh, abstractly this uh, uh, this diagonal group in the in the next class. Okay, I'll stop here. Thanks.